Hi everyone! So today is video number 4 of my back to school series. This one will be a shorter one about how to create study guides. The term study guide was very misused in my first year of the IB because the teacher would just give us a bunch of questions in anthropology and call that a study guide, but I have sort of uh, altered it into the more sort of common term of study guides. And it's very general, very easy, but it is extremely helpful and so few people did it. So um, I thought I'd share it with you guys. I want to sit so you can see my cat dress, but that's not going to happen. So study guides are great for, for instance, group 3 classes, uh, like anthropology, history, maybe even some language courses, etc. So this was what ended up as my anthropology folder uh, for my revision time, so this is just what I used for my exams. And this is also the subject where I created my best study guides. So when you create a study guide, it's very important that you have something to make the study guide off. In anthropology, it was very often uh, articles. So first, I would go through an article, I would read it, and I would highlight it. So highlight the most important things that was going on. Uh, you can also take notes on the sides, like that. Uh, what changed? Um, to sort of orient the article better, so it's easier for you to go in and find specifically what you're looking for. Now, after I'd read the article and taken my notes on it, I would go to class and I would take classes from uh, what the teacher said and what the lecture was about. So if anyone had any more uh, input, if there was any way we could relate this to other articles, the theory behind it, everything like that that was uh, relevant for the article but it was not directly written in it, I would write down and take notes on it. Then when I came home I would make the actual study guide. I'll insert a quick picture right here. So my study guides would basically be creative in Word because I thought it was a lot easier to type up. It was also easier to have them in case you lost a paper and if someone else in my class needed them. So I would open uh, a new document in Word and I would write down the class, what sort of part of the syllabus it was, and my name. And yes, I'm sharing my name because I always link uh, Twitter to my YouTube, always in the description box, it's like follow me on Twitter, and my Twitter name is my real name, so I don't understand why I should try to hide it, you know? <laughs> and then comes the actual study guide, just two pages for this one. So I like to make two columns because often it's just keywords, so you don't really need a whole page to fill up with keywords and you can save a lot of space and paper by making two columns and rather shrinking the font a bit. So for the title of the document, I will put the name of uh, the article, the name of the author and anthropologist, and the time the article was published. By having the time, you can also sort of put it into context. This time is not the most important in anthropology though, you would rather have the time the anthropologist did his or her field work that's something I would write down and highlight in the actual study guide. So I'm a sucker for highlighters. Uh, I preferred using the purple and yellow one, or my yellow highlighter will go for anything that was of importance, uh, and the purple would go for uh, key terms and definitions. So your study guide is basically the most important things from the article. So of all the things you've highlighted, you write down the most important things of those in your study guide. So um, I'm still using anthropology as an example, as this is where I've uh, done most of my study guides. I write down the name of, um, you know, the people who were studied, where this was, what sort of um, what society it was, hunter gatherer, uh, slash and burn, things like that, and anything that was important to sort of the story the author tried to communicate through the article. So the article itself is six pages long and I managed to get it down to like one and a quarter of a page so that it should sort of be a rough outline of how much information you should have in your study guide. 
Now at the very end, I added in my own column that said theory, where I listed every sort of theory that was mentioned in the syllabus that I thought relevant to uh, the article. So basically, when you create your study guide, go a bit outside what you're reading, try to connect it to the subject. Uh, perhaps if you have any immediate ideas that this could be related to or this reminds you of, write it down. This is very personal, so it's all about how you remember and how you get a good understanding of it. What I love is uh, typing my study guide up in Word and printing it out, hole punching it and having it with me with the article and the notes. Uh, that way if anything new comes up in class I can just write it directly into my study guide. Uh, with pen I can change things, I can add things and uh, I, I prefer not to use my computer for school, at least I have so far. So by having everything printed out I can still pay attention in class and edit my study guide. Now, this type of study guide is something we did in the beginning where the teacher would just give us a lot of questions regarding what we had read and we would, um, you know, answer all the questions. So this was one from um, In Search Perspect where I would just have the question and then I would type out my answer. And even though this is like a full sentence, not as point, keyword, uh, very minimalistic as the study guide I used to make or turn out to make, um, it is still very helpful, so if your teacher gives you any questions, make sure that you type it up and take it seriously. Uh, we needed to hand in ours after a while, and I think I was one of the few people who actually did it. And it was very helpful for me afterwards when it comes to revision time, because I didn't have to reread the whole book. Uh, I could just look at my study guide and I was able to quickly pick up on what the main essence of the article or the book was about. Um, if there are any particular like examples in the text that would show this, especially in the long books that we read, um, it was easy to forget all the good examples you had to back up your statement about it, especially for like anthropology paper threes. Um, this probably doesn't make sense at all to most of you guys uh, if you're not done with anthropology, but you will you will learn it. Going through my anthropology folder now, I realize. I did a lot of really great things when it comes to learning and revising, so um, if you guys want a video on how to study for social and cultural anthropology, please leave that in the comments down below. Uh, otherwise, any other request is always welcome. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or any further additional comments. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later, bye!